of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The first motivation that Jesus gives his disciples here is he wants them to remember their master. Jesus tells them to remember their master. And that's found in verse 18, where he says, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. A lot of times when we see this passage, when we hear people talk about it, we don't really think about that part of the Great Commission. This is called the Great Commission. Many of you know that. But most of us don't think about what Jesus says before he gives his great commission to his disciples. What does he say? He says, all authority has been given to me. That word for authority, uh, in the King James, it translates it as power. It says, all power has been given to me. There's different kinds of power. Um, the, the Greek word um, could be translated as power of might. Like you just are strong and you can, you, you're mighty. And that's definitely true of Jesus. He is a mighty being. He is God himself who created the universe, spoke it into existence. We saw his might in his ministry. His disciples saw his might in his ministry when he calmed the waves of the sea, when he gave sight to the blind man. He performed many miracles and they saw his might, but he doesn't say, I have power of might. He says, I have power of right. That's another kind of power. And Jesus says, all authority, I have the authority, I have the right. And then he says, go therefore and make disciples. Now that's important. That's important because Jesus wanted to remind his disciples who their true Lord and Master was. Because in the next verse it says, therefore. Now, some of you, I just, I just uh, heard some of you have been listening to some, some of my sermons online. I've, I've mentioned this before online, uh, but maybe you've heard this before. When you see the word therefore, you should ask, what's it there for? What's it there for? It's a connecting word. It's connecting the thought of authority has been given to Jesus, therefore go and make disciples. Jesus was comforting his disciples. Jesus was helping them understand who their true Lord and Master is. And the reason why is because He knew they were going to be facing a lot of difficulties. The government, the Roman government, would oppose their ministry. I mean, think of who's speaking here. Jesus Christ, who was crucified. He was executed by the Romans. They didn't like what He had to say. They didn't like what He had to teach. And that would continue. And Jesus, uh, in, in, in an effort to motivate them, to encourage them, is saying, Hey, listen, I know the Romans oppose you, but I have the authority. I have the right. It's been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples. These same disciples, not even uh, a few weeks later, would would be brought before their own Jewish leaders and their own Jew- Jewish leaders would say, stop speaking in the name of Jesus. Stop teaching about this man named Jesus. Stop talking about how he was crucified and he was buried and he rose again. Quit talking about him. Jesus knew that would happen. And so he says to them, remember, all authority has been given to me. So even though your human authorities, even though the, uh, the Jewish leaders, even though the Roman leaders are going to say, stop it. Remember, your master. I'm your master. And I have the right. And I have the authority. And I'm the one telling you to go and make disciples. Now that's important for the disciples. It's also important for us because we are living in a time where Laws are being enacted where things are changing. And it may come to a point where we have to oppose our government. Now, I'm not calling for uh, social unrest. But there are times in the Bible that we see where people uh, engage in what's called social or uh, civil disobedience. 
civil disobedience. Is that a biblical truth? Is that something that the Bible teaches? Because the Bible does say that we're supposed to obey our authorities. We're supposed to honor the king, Peter says. So what happens when the king tells us to do something that the Bible tells us not to do or tells us to stop doing something that God tells us we should do? What should we do? Jesus says, all authority has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples. So that's why it's okay for a missionary to go into a creative access country, even though the law of the land says, don't talk about Jesus. They still talk about Jesus. Why? Because all authority has been given to Christ. Think of it this way. I I just moved here from Guam, and Guam has a lot of military on, on the island. We, we had a Navy base, a, an Air Force base, a uh, National Guard base, and they're now building a Marine base on the island. A lot of military. In the military, it's all about rank, right? And if you're low on the totem pole, you obey the person above you. So let's say one day there's a private on base, and the private is working on something, and all of a sudden, uh, the corporal comes up, and the corporal says, "Uh, Private, I need you to drop everything and come with me. I need you to help me with something. So he drops everything, yes sir, follows his orders, goes with the corporal, and then all of a sudden, a guy above the corporal, the major, steps in and says, Private, I need you to stop everything you're doing, and and here's an envelope, I want you to take this envelope and deliver it to the mailroom. What does the private do? Does he say, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, I'm doing what the corporal is telling me to do. He'll say, drop everything and do what you're commanded to do. Follow your orders. And it would be right for that private to forego what the corporal tells him to do and to obey the higher rank, the major. Then all of a sudden, imagine if the general comes onto the scene and says to the private, while he's delivering that, that letter, He rolls up in his Jeep and he says, Private, jump in the Jeep. I need you to help me with something. What would the private do? Would he say, Sorry, sir, I'm doing something for the major? No. He would obey the general because he has a higher rank. In the same way, Jesus is telling us that his rank supersedes all other ranks. He is the authority. So, That's kind of scary, right? Because we're getting into a time in our history where we're going to be uh, having to engage in some civil disobedience at some point. We don't know when. But there have been people in the past, just like the disciples, when the Jewish leaders said, don't talk about Jesus, what did they say? Whether it's right for us to listen to you or to God, you judge. But we cannot help but speak about the things of which we have seen and heard. And they followed Jesus. They let the chips fall where they may. Eventually, almost every single disciple was executed by the Roman government. I think of people like John Bunyan, a great Baptist pastor from from church history. He He spent a lot of time in jail Because he refused to obey the human authority that was saying, you have to be a part of the Anglican church. And he said, no, I have the right of conscience and I want to be a Baptist pastor. And he spent time in jail. We're seeing that all over the world. We're seeing that even in the Western world, even in places like Canada. Pastors are being imprisoned. All I'm saying is Jesus tells them, to remember their master. And he wants us to remember who our true Lord and master is as we go about doing what he called us to do. Secondly, Jesus doesn't just tell them to remember their master, he says, remember their mission. In verse 19, he says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. This was the mission that Jesus gave his disciples. There's a lot of talk these days 
about the mission of the church. Why does the church exist? Why are we here? What are we supposed to do? There's a great book that uh, I got the chance to read, and it's called, What is the Mission of the Church? And it's written by Kevin DeYoung and Greg Gilbert. It's a great book. Uh, The subtitle is, Making Sense of Social Justice, Shalom, and the Great Commission. And in it, they talk about some of the verses that people point to, to say, this is our mission as a church. And one of those verses, if you'll turn there with me, is found in Genesis chapter 4. Oh, sorry, Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, beginning in verse 1, it says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in all the families of the earth, in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. In this book, they talk about how some people point to this passage and they say, this is our mission, to go and to be a blessing. What God called Abraham to do, to go away from his uh, country and to be a blessing, that's what God is calling us as a church to do. There's another passage that a lot of people point to, and that's found in the book of Luke, chapter 4. Turn there with me. Flip back over to the New Testament. Luke chapter 4. It says in verse 17 of Luke chapter 4, And there was delivered unto Jesus the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And Jesus closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Some people will point to this passage and they'll say, this is our mission. We We need to go to the poor and and preach the good news to them. We need to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. We need to give sight to the blind. Just like what what is said in this passage in Luke chapter 4. So let me ask you a question. What is our mission? Are we to go and to be a blessing? Are we to go and to feed the poor and to heal the lame? Like Jesus did, what is our mission as a church? Well, there's a great way of interpreting the Bible. And uh, I think it was Mark Dever that said it this way. The same rule that we use in, um, I forgot the word, in realty, is the same word that we need, or the rule, the same rule that we need to use in interpreting the scripture. What's the number one rule in realty? Location, 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 right? What's the number one rule when interpreting the scripture? Location, location, location. It's all about the context. In Genesis chapter 12, who is God speaking to? He's speaking to Abraham, right? He's telling Abraham, I want you to get out of Ur of the Chaldees and go to the promised land. And he's not telling Abraham, you have to bless everyone. He's saying, I will bless everyone through you. So there's a lot of misinterpretations there. That was Abraham's mission to go out of Ur of the Chaldees. Well, what about this one here in in Luke chapter 4? That was Jesus' mission. Jesus came to give sight to the blind and to heal the lame, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's not our mission. What is our mission? Well, when Jesus spoke to his disciples, 
the, some of the final words that he spoke to them before he left them to continue on his ministry, what did he say? He said, chapter 28 of the book of Matthew, verse 19, make disciples of all nations. That's our mission. As a church, as followers of Jesus Christ, that's what we're called to do. Now, some people will say it's our mission to go dig wells and provide water for people. And it's our mission to, to give sight to the blind and to help people, to give food to the poor. Those are good things. But the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. What's the main thing? Make disciples. It's what God called us to do. That's our mission. Don't forget it. Don't get distracted. We live in a time where social justice is the big buzzword. We need to help people with social justice. That's the call of the church. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, that's not our call. That's not our mission. Our mission is to make disciples. Now, is it a good thing to, to help people to provide water for people and to help give food to the poor? Yes, but in my opinion, those should be means to an end. And a lot of missionaries have done that over the years. They've used medical missions. They provided water. They provided food as a means to an end to preach the gospel to people so that they might do what Jesus asked them to do, make disciples. That's not all of our mission though, right? That, that, those two words, make disciples, what does that look like? Well, in the other passages that are called the Great Commission, uh, the other occurrences of them in the other Gospels, it talks about preaching the Gospel or the good news. And then it says in here, in verse 19, baptizing them in the name of the Father. And then it says in verse 20, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. So that, those two words, make disciples, that involves evangelism and involves discipleship. So if you are involved, if you were involved in Vacation Bible School this week, if you were helping in some way, helping teach the kids, helping share the gospel with them, helping with music, you're involved in the Great Commission. If you're a mom of young kids and you're teaching them the truths of the Word of God, you're teaching them to observe all things that Jesus commanded us to do, you're involved in the Great Commission. If you are a Sunday school teacher or an Awana leader and you're helping people to observe all things Christ commanded, you're involved in that mission. It involves evangelism and it involves discipleship. And I fear that many churches have gotten distracted by other things. They have not kept the main thing the main thing. So I want to encourage you this morning because this is a, a group of 11 men. 11 men Jesus is speaking to here. And because they took up the mission, here we are today. Any church of any size can be involved in this great commission. You don't have to have a lot of uh, resources. I mean, let's be honest. We can look at other ministries and we can see, wow, look at all the resources. Look at the huge campus they have. Look at all the people they have. Look at the great things they're doing. And we can get discouraged and say, oh, look at us. We don't have that. What are we going to do? We can all fulfill with the Holy Spirit's power this great commission. So number one, Jesus tells them, he wants them to remember their master. He says, I am your Lord. I am your master. All authority has been given to me. Therefore, remember your mission. Do what I'm asking you to do. And then he ends it by saying this. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Isn't that a comfort? Now, I know you're not going to like the way I phrase this. So bear with me. The third thing that Jesus tells his disciples to do is to remember their mate. And we don't like that word in, in the United States, right? That sounds kind of cringe. What do you mean? Well, most of you know that I grew up in Australia. I was a missionary kid. 
And I spent eight years of my life in Australia. And anyone who knows anything about Australians know they talk about their mates all the time. They're not talking about their spouses. They're talking about their closest friend, their buddy. Me mate. What does me mate do? Me mate's there for me. Gives me the shirt off his back. That's what we're talking about here. Our mate, our buddy, our friend, our support system. In Australia, they celebrate vet- veterans just like we do here. They don't call it Veterans Day. They call it Anzac Day. I'm not sure why. I haven't looked that up. But uh, on Anzac Day, they would, the, the soldiers would tell stories from war and they would talk about their mates. The guys who were there for them. The guys who would take a bullet for them. I don't know if you've uh, heard of the, the book. It's called um, To End All Wars. And it's about World War II. And it's about some uh, prisoners of war from Australia and Great Britain and other uh, countries uh, in, in that region. And these guys were captured by the Japanese and they were tortured. They were put in, uh, in concentration camps and they did everything they could for each other. They gave food from their own rations to their mates to keep them alive. They um, took beatings for their friends. They gave the shirt off their back. They healed, they, they, they helped nurse their mates back to health. Remember your mate. Jesus says, I'm with you. I'm there. Even to the end of the age. And so as we look into the future, what's going to happen in Christendom with all the crazy things that we hear in the news, with what we've experienced just in the past couple years, few years with COVID and and having stay-at-home orders and and, and not being allowed to gather together, what's going to happen Jesus knew his disciples were facing some major opposition. And he gave them some motivators. He said, number one, remember your master. I'm in charge. I got this. Number two, remember your mission. And number three, remember your mate. I'm I'm with you. I'm there for you. If you've read through the end of the Bible, you know things are going to get worse before they get any better. And so in this time, I want to encourage you this morning by just telling you, remember what Jesus said to his disciples. Remember your master, remember your mission, and remember your mate. Let's close in prayer. Dear God, we thank you that you gave us instructions. We thank you that you left us with these motivations. And we ask that you would help us to follow in your footsteps And you'd help us to keep the main thing the main thing. May we rely on you. May we obey you. Uh, May we do what we're called to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.